bread pudding today with a beautiful whiskey uh, cream sauce. Just these um, books from Ayn Rand. This is Read the Living, The Fountainhead, and Atlas Shrine. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. I am so excited that you guys are with me here tonight. Oh, what a great, beautiful day it's been today. So I hope you guys are all getting ready for your Christmas with your families, your friends, your neighbors. I am so thrilled. Um, this has been one heck of a month. We have worked on a lot of things for Christmas. I hope I've given you a lot of great ideas. And I hope you guys have made some handmade things. Um, I really have loved that, um, making that this year and giving that out to my wonderful friends and neighbors. So I am thrilled to be here with you tonight. I hope you guys are thrilled as much. Thank you, first of all, for being here. And second of all, I am really excited. I've been sharing the 12 days of Christmas out on Truth every day with um, a day and a scripture and a, a beautiful picture to go with it. And you guys are really loving that and sharing that. And so a huge thank you for that. And thank you so much for liking, sharing and, and following um, my wonderful show. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just a joy to be here to highlight you guys and to have you guys part of this wonderful venture. So with that being said, we're going to do a little a little bit different today because I have a wonderful interview. Oh my gosh. If you guys do not know about Artist Corner, please, please go and be a part of it. That is my wonderful group on True Social. It has just been such a breath of fresh air for me and many others to look at your wonderful talents and to share them out with everybody. It's been also wonderful to highlight an artist of the day. Also, I highlight an artist of the week. And so with that being said, let's get right to it. We're going to just do here's a little shout out to the artist corner. You guys can find that on Truth Social. And I am going to add this right now because what a wonderful artist. Oh, Sharon, she has been a guest on our show. She has received this honor several times. And it couldn't be more fitting that this was the one you guys chose and voted for. I, like I said, I just absolutely love her work. She's just an amazing, amazing artist and, and was a great guest to have. And I am so thrilled that you guys love that too. So huge shout out to S.A.K. Harris. Make sure you guys are giving her a huge congratulations and a Merry Christmas for this. Her artwork is absolutely beautiful. So we're going to show you a little up close here with the Santa with the toys. Just absolutely thrilling. Oh, with the little dog. I love this. And another one I wanted to share with you guys too, and I did tag that in her as well. I just love her work, as you guys have loved it too. So I am really, um, give everybody again, give a huge shout out. You could go follow her, S-A-K Harris at True Social. Please do. Please congratulate her. Please make sure that you are saying also Merry Christmas. What a beautiful job. Thank you so much to our wonderful Artist of the Week. How can you be an artist? Go and, and be highlighted. Go to Artist Corner. Everyone, this is not just about, I know, and I love you guys who paint too. Don't get me wrong. I'm an artist myself, but it was a group that we created that all artists could be there, whether you're cooking or you're sewing or you've written a book or you're making music or you're wonderful photography. I mean, just so many things. Poetry. I am just so thrilled to be a part of this and a huge shout out to Ray as well for helping me moderate and to highlight these wonderful artists there on true social because with all the things that are going on in this world it's so nice to have what's called a social media cleanse and i love it when you guys do that i mean other groups is too and i love the little good mornings i love the memes i love the love that everybody's sharing with these groups it's just probably one of my favorite things now about true social is these wonderful groups so thank you my friends for making my day and enjoying the wonderful talents that is out there on True Social. And if you're not part of it, 
come be a part of it because we would love to see your talents as well. All right, everyone. I also want to do a huge shout out to JJ. JJ is just making my life wonderful with the beautiful new intro and outro videos. He's also been able to help me with the music, and I am just so excited to welcome him to, you know, Team Hamilton, <laughs> Team Lady Hamilton. So everyone say a huge thank you and a shout out to JJ because I am just utterly grateful. And, oh, man, it's just, like I said, it's just been a, a whirlwind of happy. The past few days have just been really, really happy. So I hope you guys are doing that, that as well. All right. We have a wonderful interview tonight from one of our fabulous artists on True Social and in Artist Corner. It's with Mystic Goose. And I'm going to be playing this video um, due to our schedule. We just had to um, tape it earlier. But I am just so thrilled. We went really long. And I'm just so thrilled to not only get to know her, but to share this with you and her talents with you. Also, I wanted to say a huge thank you because Mystic Goose is the one that started the Christmas tree challenge. And I am loving this. And we're going to share out your, your Christmas trees again after the interview. And to show those off, thank you guys, everyone, for doing that. Thank you, Mystic Goose, for, for starting that challenge. I know we've got some more challenges coming on in January with um, our H2O color artist with recliner art. And Mystic Goose is starting a throwback Thursday, which I am super excited for. So make sure you guys are joining in the fun. I am loving to see this. And like I said, it is just a wonderful honor. So I am going to load up the video here for everybody. Let me just remove one of these, sorry everyone, and share the video with you. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's nice to be able to interview people ahead of time because I get to be able to be in the chats and listen. And like I said, there is just such pleasure in to sit there and have you guys as my guest, to get to interview you, get to know you, build that friendship even stronger. And I am so thankful that you guys are so willing to share your talents with the rest of the world. So with further ado, let here is Mystic Goose. This corner. art honors in high school and gave up painting and hello everyone i have a very special guest tonight so i would like to read her bio before we introduce her to the show i'm so excited when i have one of you guys from artist corner come on it is absolutely a truly thrill and it is my pleasure and my honor to introduce to you tonight one of our favorites mystic goose Kyla is also known as the Mystic Goose, is a mixed media acrylic and newly found digital artist. Her artist name comes from her background in the Christian mystic faith and a family inside joke. Her brother nicknamed her sister Goose, and in the Celtic tradition, the Holy Spirit is represented not by a dove, but by a boisterous goose, showing that God's spirit cannot be tamed. She has a very long line of artists, cultures, and musicians in her family. Her family tree goes far back to the French Huguenots and the famous artists such as Harry Hoffman. Her main inspiration was her great Grammy, who passed when she was young. Her Grammy started oil painting for the heck of it in, in her 50s and has an extensive collection. Kyla was an international art honors in high school and gave up painting in college. She joined the pharmacy industry during the pandemic and felt like she needed an outlet to respect sorry, to rediscover who she was. One day in 2022, she discovered Posca markers and bought herself a new sketchbook. Soon after, she decided to join Truth to express her art without all the nasty politics, to find artists with a similar spirit. She felt like she had become rusty and needed to learn how to paint again. Starting with blue to match her chinoise decor, her monochrome series was born. Since then, she has been making art to express her love for God's rainbow, stars, planets, and for fun. Always experimenting and discovering new ways to create art 
is a part of her DNA and essential to her functioning. She couldn't be more thankful for the people in her life that encourage her to walk boldly in her gifts to the kingdom. Everyone, I'm so thrilled to present um, Mystic Goose. So let's welcome her now. All right, everybody, as I said, let's, we are welcoming Mystic Goose with us today, everybody. This, we love it. I love that you guys are coming on from Artist Corner. This is one of the few things, I mean, I just am so thrilled about, about with True Socials that they opened up these groups. And we have this amazing new artist group, and so many of you guys are coming in with different kinds of arts. And I, I tell you over and over and over again, it's not just painting, although we do have a wonderful painter with us tonight and a digital artist. So a, a few things about your bio we're going to get started with, because you say you come from a Celtic background, and I don't know, too many people don't know this, but I was born in Scotland. I also have dual okay. citizenship. So, and I mean, my family, so I married into them, the Hamiltons from the Highlands. Um, and then my other family were the Fifes and Campbells. So, I mean, I'm Scottish through and through, and I love that. I mean, I even love Celtic music. One of my favorites is Amazing Grace when it's in the Celtic form. I mean, just like, right? So we mm -hmm. have already this much in common. So I would like you to tell us a little bit more about your background. Uh, yeah. Were you born here? And I saw yes. a little bit about you dabbling into the arts again in 2022. So I'd like you to finish up kind of with a little bit more of what was that push for 2022? And it's all you. Go ahead. Okay. So I think you beat me in the Irish heritage. Um, I am very much an American mutt. <laughs> Um, most people don't realize my mother is black and my father is Scotch Irish British. Um, my family has a huge history. We're still trying to learn. Like we've been there. My um, oops, without giving my name away, um, one of my ancestors was governor of Jamestown. Uh, we've been to Hudson Bay. Like just about every major American event, family was there. <laughs> so we've been artists, musicians, jazz musicians. Like it's deep roots so, oh i love that yeah yeah and I i'm also a violist that. as well so yeah nice so i wish i, were, I wish were a little more irish but, but. you know but you started so and i love that too i mean i love my heritage i always i own my husband's forefather more than i think he does because he's related he's like the great great grandson of alexander hamilton I talk about that, that like, like that's mine, you know. I mean, I'm married to him. My kids are definitely all like, but I'm like, everyone asks, is that your grandfather? No, not not technically, but you know, I mean, I'm also, uh, you know, very much a mutt. My father is definitely not Scottish, but my mother was, and okay. I just love it. And I love, I mean, you know, those true stories of immigration, the the experiences of Renaissance and revolutions, and you know, and I. One of my favorite periods was the Harlem Renaissance with the explosion of the arts and the music and the so forth. So I see that um, a similarity, I guess, between us. And so I also, because you started your arts in high school. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I did. So I was going to say I was more the French Creole. That's my Louisiana. Oh, that's so cool. more, more South. <laughs> yeah. Are you from that zone right now? Um, I'm not giving too much away. I'm in mid Atlantic, is where I'm okay. at right now. My, my bio says RVA. So. You know, Richmond, I always say I'm East Coast, you know? <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. I do the same. I'm on the East Coast, and I don't necessarily give you my GPA. You know, GPS. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is at least you're over on this side. That's nice mm -hmm. to have you. Awesome. Yeah, so you were up, yeah. you were inspired by Granny. Right. So tell me yes. more about that. Is that something like you would watch her paint? Were you involved in that? Did she even teach you, or how did this start? Sure. Great Grammy was a character. <laughs> I wish I knew her more because, you know, I was kind of little when she was around. I did see glimpses of her. I just know that she, I mean, I got some sitting next to me right now of just oil paintings that I haven't hung up. She, she was a Renaissance woman. She did everything. She went to the women's version of Harvard at the time. Um, she composed her own music. She skipped two grades. I mean, like she was genius. Um, <laughs> She one day in her 50s was like, I'm bored. I'm really bored. Picked up oil paints and started oil painting. And oh, she was a snob. When it came, she was like, the only perfect form is oil paint. So I went, okay, Grammy. <laughs> so, it's, so I have, I had to snag the ones I love the most. I've got at least maybe 20 paintings in here. 
my family, my mom's got about maybe 50, Grammy, not Grammy, my Nana, she's probably got like 30, like they're everywhere. She painted everything and anything she could. So, and then one day she was like, I'm bored. I don't want to do this anymore. But it's just what she, she, she did. That's funny. Um, I always loved her work because it was kind of impressionist. And it was very bold and she was not afraid to use black lines. And I remember my art teachers always going, no, you need to finish this. Stop outlining all your things. But if you notice a lot of my art subconsciously, I like to outline a lot of stuff. I don't feel like it has the right form because I like that sketchbook look. I like the kind of unfinished look. It's also an excuse because I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> Sometimes I don't want to like draw a hand or it's more about like a movement versus right. like an actual so i don't know like and i just love that her colors even though it's just oil paints they're so saturated bright like her blues yes. knock you out like it, it does like it doesn't do justice the photos i sent you like you look at it and you're just like oh. <laughs> yeah it's breathtaking so you know i have to agree with that i mean oils is mine my favorite although i do <laughs> mixed media and things like that too i always finish with oils and i glaze mine too um but you know, oh, yeah. th there's it, and they take a long time. But the color are mm -hmm. so rich when you come to rich. oils. I mean, I'll have to say that whatever medium you guys are using, I'm sure it's fine. But when you start playing with mm -hmm. oils, and the reason they're so rich too is not only are the colors literally ground, you know, and stuff, and you're adding mm -hmm. oils, so you're making them even more lustrous. You know, when they come and hit a canvas, mm -hmm. they have this like sheen to them because of you're mixing them with linseed or whatever oil you, yeah. that you're doing, but when i found that and i started with charcoals and drawings and uh, watercolors and acrylics but when mm -hmm. i found oils it was like a duck in water and i found really? a way to For do me, that was acrylic. yeah right but we all have our own things and i've had and just so you know the one that normally is behind me i'm not sitting in my my studio today mm -hmm. but the one that's behind me is called justice normally and i had an art and teacher behind just, you huh not this behind you Oh, okay. no, but, this one, but normally on my show, I'm sitting in my studio and the artwork is sitting right behind me. Her name is Justice. And I remember mm -hmm. she's been in the most gallery showings that I've ever had. OK, but if mm -hmm. I would have listened to my professor at this time who swore mm -hmm. at me and told me this whole thing is messed up from its quote unquote effed up. But he didn't say, you know, F. he used the right word or the appropriate word. Mm -hmm. he says, Everything is effed up from the, F the effing the uh, football shaped eyes to the effing stinking lips. I was like, what? So I literally went and talked to my my dean because I'm like, I have a professor cussing at me, first of all. But if I would have listened to that, I probably would have stopped. And, you know, I'm glad that you do your own thing. That's the point of this. I'm glad you do your own thing because I had other professors tell me, who cares if they like it or not? This is you and your expression of your work. So you own true to yourself and that's all that matters. If you like it, Mm -hmm. and you're happy with it then that's all that matters and i love that you're, you're different <laughs> that's a word for me well is and your variety i'm going to show pictures everyone here but you're you're also you know i mean from you can really do something in detail but then you have this um um what's the word i'm looking for it is um mm -hmm. oh my gosh it's just like it's totally it left abstract you have an abstract in some of your work as well too and i love that you just go from the different styles yeah so continue with with your bio so grandma really helped you out and loved the oils um but you said that you and you graduated with art with honors but not in college mm -mm. and so yeah i was gonna go back to that because i remember you just you asked me that yeah um still trying to figure out what i'm my purpose is for God's kingdom right now. I'm getting closer to it very much. So, you know, I work in healthcare. I work in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, it makes me question a lot of things. Um, my true love is art, obviously. Um, yeah, I went into college for biochemistry because I thought I was gonna be working in the lab or zoology. I'm obsessed with the animals. And then I said, but I really love art. So I gotta do something. And I went, oh, I could minor in studio art. And then I said, well, then what, what on earth, earth am I going to do with biochemistry in a studio? Or I'm like, that's not, I, I was thinking money. I was like, what am I going to do for, for money income? So I said, oh, I could do psychology, um, which has actually kind of helped me out a lot in life. Um, I, I know a lot more than I, I thought I needed to know about human nature and stuff, but it actually helped me. And I said, oh, I'll be an art therapist. I, I would love to do that and like work with kids. 
because my favorite was uh, childhood development. And I thought kids are just the most brilliant, brightest things on this planet. And if you catch them early and help them learn how to deal with their emotions and their thoughts and everything, you know, like, I think that's the most beneficial. But then what stopped me was, uh, it's, it's a tough story. Um, you know, a, a typical depression. Um, the, the doctor did not prescribe me the right thing. I went through, through some bad side effects with different drugs. Uh, my grades were declining. I just, I just kind of stopped caring. And then I kind of dropped out of college. <laughs> so it was, it was not a fun time. I ended up working lots of odd jobs, ins and outs. And at that time, I just, I kind of gave up. I never picked up my palette, my sketchbook, anything. It just kind of was thrown away. Right. I've moved countless times, like or a little bit before college, like right before college, I went through a traumatic experience. Um, again, I don't like talking too much about it because it, it hurts, but my house caught on fire. Mm -hmm. um, my propane tank exploded with me inside the house. It, 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 was, it was a God thing because there's no, no way I would have survived. Right. Um, and I, I had to deal with that. And um, technically, I've been moving every year since 2012. So I don't have a sense of home or, so, you know, constantly feel like I'm on the run. Um, and it, it was just a constant sense of running and running and running, trying to find peace. And, and, and um, my family and I have since made peace thanks to God above. And, you know, only, only through Christ we have mended it. But it was it was rough. So I always abandoned art. Um, I didn't feel supported. Like I didn't feel like my family really cared about my art. And they always thought it was kind of like, oh, you're going to be a starving artist, get a real degree, do a real job, do something that matters. And I was like, okay. I just, um, and then, yeah, doing all these odd jobs. I actually ended up all the way up to corporate for Chick-fil-A. That's a whole story for another day. <laughs> I, I traveled for the company. Um, I opened up a smoothie shop. I joined the pharmaceuticals. And one day, um, I know it's a bit like, that's kind of like a long way getting around <laughs> to the story. But um, one day I said, I am so miserable. Why am I so miserable? And I was like in a bad relationship at the time, living with a bad roommate situation. And I said, I need to do something. I need, I need an outlet or I'm going to go crazy. And I discovered Posca markers, which I don't use too often anymore, but they're these like acrylic um, pens. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can paint on the go. That sounds great. I can go anywhere. I, I love acrylic and it dries fast. Let's try it. Right. Started doing that. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is feels like crack. <laughs> like I was wow. like, oh, sorry, I have a drink. Yeah. I've never heard like, of these I, I, pens. I, 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 you guys are always oh, coming so on fun. telling me, try they're this, so try that. And I, I need to really, you know, you venture out i guess but go ahead <laughs> yeah she had to shake them up and you gotta like press them a little uh, like a couple okay. times and then draw kind of like a white out it. pen in a in a sense yes but they're acrylic it's acrylic okay. paint okay um they will tear up your paper so you gotta make sure you're right draw it on some gloss i mean you can do it on tooth paper that's because i have mixed media paper they're not as forgiving they're not as blending but like they're fun for like graphic and nice. that wasn't working for me but i did i think i included one of the pictures um in the email i sent you so we, we might go through it. i don't remember if i did or not i got a lot of stuff but i said okay this is fun this is this has got the juices going i'm like now i want to get back to paint and it took me forever to get to paint because you know apartment situations limited space um but once i finally started painting again and maybe like 2023 i think was like this year this was the final year I was like no I'm really back into art again um and I just I've been rolling ever since <laughs> so yeah I love that. yeah I love that. you know there's there's things that I think that one of the things I love about you guys coming on is there's so many things mm -hmm. that we can relate to and have similarities to number one it makes you feel like you're not alone in this world but I mean mm -hmm. I have been moving been moving since oh about the same time I adopted mm -hmm. three medically fragile children from the, you know the foster system. They were in our stead, and I well, was ugly, ugly, mm -hmm. ugly, ugly, ugly situation. And I when I, I started at a community college, their their thing. I was chef before all this, so we ended up become foster parents. And mm -hmm. their regime was so intensive. I mean, it was like bleaching everything in the house down every day, and um, you know, bleaching them down. And I started going to community college just to get away and have an hour or so to me doing art classes. I just like, I had to do something. 
and somebody nominated me for a scholarship. And this is all through God, I'm telling you. And I won this. I didn't even know about it. Um, I ended up graduating valedictorian, but I was just going to do online classes. And up and boom, 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 I ended up moving and going to a university. And I would dang, if not the next few days, that the bios were coming out trying to kidnap them. We had gone through two kidnapping attempts. Then when I graduate from another one, God moved us all the way across the country for me to go to an Ivy School at Columbia. You know, there were some good things there. <laughs> not Maybe not a lot, but uh, probably the most depressing time I've ever spent in my life. So I can also understand that too, but I would paint about the children and their emotions. And that was kind of my release to that. And, you know, but I, I'm just like not feeling when you're saying, I don't feel like I have a home because I've been moving around and I don't have roots. You know, but then I was in such a dark space painting this kind of stuff because I would have to do research or I wanted to do it. If my paintings are going to be authentic, I need to do the research that goes with them. Yep. And it got to the point where I just like I got so depressed in Columbia was one of the, you know, most depressing time in my life, you know, where I'm like, I'm not going to pick up nothing. I don't want to paint anymore. I don't want ever. It was just kind of this last year was really kind of horrid. So I can understand, you know, how we get moved in this kind of things and we have to fight our way back. And mm -hmm. art is that. And I'm so glad you talked about art therapy because I have an mm -hmm. art integrated school. And just mm -hmm. by having art projects per se, whether they're building a business plan or they're doing logos or they're doing some digital or they're physically painting or sculpting and they're doing projects. I cannot tell mm -hmm. you how much it's helping these children not even be able to climb up to different levels. It's, it's like tactile for them as well for some kids like they need to be able it's to retention and, it's, yes. right. and, and it mm -hmm. is and it's therapy i mean you know i mean they, they've been through all kinds of trauma and you never know what kid is also going through personal traumas as well so it's amazing what mm -hmm. art can do and i'm really glad you brought that up because art is not just crayons on some paper like a lot of people think oh you know it is just so much more i mean it can brighten you know, your Mm -hmm. You always see the pictures, kid. Oh, sorry. You always see the pictures kids bring home. Like, oh, here's mommy and daddy, and then you'll see like a picture that doesn't look so good, and then you know the teacher goes, "What's going on at home?" It's like you would have right. never known unless the kid was expressing themselves. Because sometimes they don't know how to communicate those things, and so no. I always found it's it's so important for kids it is to be able very to important. Draw it out. With my own children, they would you know I had one daughter would paint everything black everything the people the whatever black and then as she started hmm. to get trusting in us and then learn that they were a great relationship all of a sudden this rainbow would go over them then the people underneath it would change into flowers and color was introduced and so from you know right from learning about art therapy and studies the rainbow was protection thank you god mm -hmm. the rainbow was protection and the tulips that used to be black scary people were now turned into tulips and there were three of them for her and her siblings I was like, look at this. And just teaching them with an art lens, she all of a sudden started feeling protected. I was like, you're going to cry. <laughs> oh, you're gonna, I started you're making one of the kids. <laughs> right. But it started me understanding at that point how much art works for our children as well. And you never know. Like, as an educator, you don't know who that child's her real background in your classroom. And um, 100%. you never know. Yes. So I am thrilled. You should think about doing that again. I think especially with your background, you would have a lot to give. But, you know, that's just me. Um, I love what you do. And there's so much, there's so much richness in each one of your pieces. And um, wow. like I said, some tend to be a little bit abstract and some tend to be more refined. But I love that you can do all, all of this. You know, it's really wonderful. I would say I'm a very jack of all trades, master of none. So. <laughs> That's, that's I'm okay with that. I'm okay with right. being okay with right. a lot of I, things. It's, I know. I mean, isn't life about learning as much as you can? Variety is the spice of life. That's what I told my boyfriend this morning, and he said, "Yeah, okay." That's right. That's right. I mean, there's a million <laughs> things I can do as well, but I enjoy it. I love learning. How about that? You know. Oh, so yeah. I'm. I'm sorry about your college experience. You know, that's that could be really tough, and especially Arts, if you're college. Okay. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. Um, Good. I think it was honestly the best thing that could have happened to me. Of course, I was, I won't get like deviate super long, Um, but I, I almost fell into, even though I am conservative, grew up conservative, Christ fearing, you still kind of fall into the liberal arts um, spell, I guess, of what they teach you and what you need. And um, I was kind of bratty. <laughs> uh, a little 
not a little, I was a bit entitled. Okay. And, and I think the best thing that happened to me is, it, it's a God thing. He, he can take a bonfire. Oh, wow, I use fire for an example again. I can take a bonfire and just make it into a beautiful thing. Like, you know, from like the ashes of Phoenix again. Right. Um, I think, honestly, my dad kicking me out of college was one of the best things that could happen to me. It gave me a spine, a backbone, an appreciation for the workforce and, I'm, I, I do not need a degree to be happy. Right. I don't think people can convince me ever again to go back to public school for a degree unless I really, really, really needed it for something. I'm like, I think God is much more powerful than a piece of paper that I, and thousands of dollars of debt. So I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, with like, you. Um, one of the things we even teach yeah. our high schoolers before they leave is like an adulting 101. So they're prepared, but we teach them how to do business plans or trade schools or whatever route they want to take. Right. Cause it's really their dream, well, not, not ours. But you know, I mean, the, the, the public system is a disaster. It was a disaster decades ago and it's just gotten, you know, 10 times worse. The more that the government takes over, the more it's a disaster. And I just heard, saw this, you know, and I had to make a, make a difference, but I, it's, it's really bad. I don't, I, I totally agree with you, you know, and you don't need that. I mean, the only thing that you would need like a college degree for, you know, of course, if you're going to be something like a doctor or a nurse, I mean, there are some kind of trainings and things like that, but if you want to go out and just start something, you do not need a college degree to be successful in life. Yeah. So, all right, sweetie, let's, um, I'm going to load some of this up. You can talk us through you. which, which oh, picture boy. would you like me to start on? Would you like, Oh gosh, I don't remember what I sent you. <laughs> okay, well, we have three kind of layers here. I'm gonna load one up. Okay. And I think we'll go I know one's that. like monochrome series. That's kind of more what I start. Well, I started with like the sketchbook kind of stuff. Okay, so then, I'm gonna add one and hopefully you can see this. Let's take a look. Okay, can you see that? Um it's just a black screen. So oh, I see, oh, I can see it. I, I was hoping okay. that you can see it. Can you see it now? Yeah, yeah I love this one. Okay, <laughs> good. I love this one way more than I thought I did when I was making it because I was hating it when I was. <laughs> I love like, it. So it tell us like about these as though. we are. And see, this is what I mean about these ones. I would almost say I have a little bit more abstract to them, but the, I like it. I like it a lot. So. And she just looks like she's emerging, like you were talking about, that God can just pull you from whatever fire, whatever thing that you, life you have. And this is at least uh, what I see in it. But um, tell us the story. Yeah, so this is part of my monochrome series. This is orange. So I set up, the challenge was I forgot how to paint. And I said, instead of me mixing all the colors together, let me just learn how each color reacts to just black and white. So I know the ranges. And then I think after this series, I'm going to work on trying to blend them with maybe complementary and just kind of see how they act. Um, but this is straight up just orange paint, two different types of orange paint and black and white. And I mixed. Oh, sorry, I just love her. <laughs> I haven't looked at this in a while. Um, yeah. Love it. It's a lot. There's a lot behind these. I know a lot of people and um, it's a little controversial because I am a Christian, um, but I am a, I'm a Christian mystic. And I know a lot of people think that's a little strange. Um, I do study a lot of astrology. I know there's a huge stigma on that. Um, I will briefly say that the stars and the planets are gods. They've always been gods. And the main point of my art, at least when I do something serious like that, is to glorify and bring it back to him because that's his divine calendar. The whole like horoscope thing and the divinity you know well, i can't think of the word right now blah, 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 too many syllables and people are using it to like douse their life or i'm like no no no. it's more of just a divine calendar you can look up to the stars and just be thankful that like today this is the day god declared or this month this is what god has declared in the heavens and so this is virgo virgo the virgin um that's why i kind of made her Oops, where'd she go <laughs> sorry there she is <laughs> yeah um and I don't know. And I, I originally wanted to do green because Virgo is like an earth sign, but I don't know. I just started rolling with the angel. I liked the idea of a phoenix. Mm -hmm. And I think originally um, it was a different truth group I'm on. It's like the truth art project and it was mm -hmm. about like rising against. And so I said, oh, that works. I'll just use this as an excuse. Nice. Um, 
Yeah, and I hate, uh, you can tell, I hate drawing hands and feet. I haven't really gotten to that point because this canvas <laughs> right. is about yay, like yay, yay big. And I, I don't really have detail brushes and I want it. It's fine, she's flames. So she can just do this. <laughs> That's right. Like, you, you know, like, you know, there's hands there. Um, I, I really love like how her hair just kind of flows about. I don't know. I just was having fun with it. In the beginning, I hated it, screamed. I thought it looked like buffalo sauce. <laughs> like, and then I hated it more because I hate buffalo sauce. I hate the smell of it. Oh, <laughs> I love but it. Once, love it. Then it was so funny. I sat there for like, she was done for about mm, maybe like two weeks. And I, I would sit there and I would just stare at her like this. I would just go, I'm like, something's wrong with her. Something's wrong with her arm. Looks like a noodle. And then I had to get my um, uh, Nomad Jam. He's like another um, user on Truth. And I had him look at it and he goes, oh, well, the arm does look like a noodle. You need to fix it. And so it's always nice because I, I, I'm the type of person that will stare at my art for way too long to the point where I hate it. And I need to like step away and force another person to look at it and tell me what's actually wrong with it. And then I'll go, hmm. Right. And then I'll determine if it's wrong. <laughs> but no, I... I don't know. I just I'm I'm very pleased with this one out of all my monochrome. I think she's one of the strongest ones. So I'm glad we started with her. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you're not the only artist. You know, my husband's always like, well, because most of my pictures are oil. And every year I glaze them, or if I'm getting them ready for a museum show or a gallery show, I'll glaze them. And he goes, Why do you do that? Because I go, I don't know if they're done. <laughs> and if I can keep them wet and glaze, then I can go back and fix them or add to them. <laughs> I love acrylics because I am fast and furious and impatient. So if I don't like it, I can just paint over it again. People go, oh, we could just right. scrape off with oils. I'm like, I don't got time for it. You don't got time for the drying. Oh, mm -hmm. she's beautiful. Absolutely Thank beautiful. You. All love right. Her. That's the first one. This so one is? I have a, yeah, so this is the first okay. one of the monochrome. But this one's kind of eh. I don't like it as much as the others, but I still love it because one, I love horses. I just love chinoiserie. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Chinoiserie. I'm obsessed with this print. Um, my whole apartment, of course, I won't take you on a tour, but I've got little porcelain pieces everywhere. And my kitchen has these porcelain fish and mugs and stuff. And I was like, well, I, my apartment's bare. Of course, I've got Grammy's paintings. And I said, but I want to put my own stuff up here. I paint something for my apartment. So I made this really, you can kind of tell it's like very texturized in the back. Mm -hmm. I just kept layering up the acrylic. Like sometimes I like to push an art supply and make it do what it's not supposed to do. Right. Because I think it's fun. And I just, I just did. And I had really fun with this. That's um, This pose was from a sketch of my sketchbook, I think. And I just used it as a base because I was like, eh, I'm just going to draw something quick and fast. I don't really care. And then I just went, oh, this is kind of nice. I'm like, I did blue. And I said, okay, well, let me do green next. So I think you can see like green underneath the painting. And I said, oh, okay, cool. And then once I did that, I was like, oh, okay. What if I do all the colors? What if I do the whole rainbow? So this is, is kind of what started it all. And then I jokingly was like, okay, it's a horse. So this one's Sagittarius. <laughs> um, and I just, I think I just called it Chinoiserie Horse. Love it. I love the texture too. It's not, it's not really much to it. It's just a horse. <laughs> well, I know, but it's got so much texture yeah. to it. I, I was wondering if you did the background mm -hmm. with a palette knife, you know, and built up the texture that way. Because that's um that's what I I thought. And I I really do love it. I love it when I'm you can turn crazy. a canvas and you can see, huh? Go ahead. No, I said I said no, I'm just crazy. I just kind of take the paint with the brush and just keep going. And I just kind of like do the Bob Ross, like texturize kind of <laughs> Right. I was just talking about him yesterday when I was on the show. I was, too. Right. I loved Bob Ross. <laughs> Love it. He's inspired so many of us, you know, with just a little touch here. Or add a little. <laughs> I love it. It's yeah. your world. That's right. Um, no, I, I do. You want me to go back? No, go ahead. Um, I was going to say that background. So a lot of my paintings, I finger paint. Okay. I will originally, I will go in with my like brushes mainly. And then when I'm like, oh, this isn't blending, I will just take my fingers and wet them. And I do a lot of like, I'll put water over real quick, blend it. And I take a paper towel and dab it off nice. to like kind of force them to blend. So that's kind of how I built the background. But also I'm like, it's been a while since I painted this one. So I don't know. It's hiding underneath my Christmas tree right now. <laughs> 
really nice. I think you would also like to play around with, they've got wax and grits that you can add mm. to your acrylic paint. So they have to look into that. Mm -hmm. And they're really fun to mold, it, especially with the, the wax one with acrylic and fingers. Oh my gosh, it's, it's really mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to, right? We're changing, we're exchanging things. I've never heard of those pens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I can tell you all kinds of things. I can tell you all kinds of stuff. I've like played with it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. This is your blue one, right? Yeah, this is indigo. Oh, yes, I, lo I love this one too. <laughs> uh, uh, this is Indigo Dino. I know it's not a very, very creative title, but I just thought it was cute. This is a Carnotaurus. Um, I was always that little girl that wanted to play with Hot Wheels and dinosaurs. Um, I was a tomboy. I did not need to change my gender. So <laughs> I, um, that love is still stayed with me as an adult. Um, I still... I was, I was watching a lot of um, Answers in Genesis at the time. I don't know if you know about them. Uh, they talk about creationism and the whole, like, how dinosaurs fit with the Bible. And it, it just fascinated me. And at the time, it's like, I have to I have to do a dragon. I have to do a dragon. So I was like, well, the most befitting creature to be a dragon would be the one with the horns. So I have, I have so many model dinosaurs in my apartment. I like to use them for reference. And I just kind of went crazy with it. And I really went in. And I love the, the texture I did with its neck. Nice. And I didn't really know what to do uh, with the smoke coming out. I did want to have smoke because I wanted to be like a fire breathing dragon, but it was kind of a lazy afterthought. But I, I, I still, I don't know. I, I think he's kind of whimsical. He looks sleepy. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I love, yeah. I, I could have been an archaeologist as well, too, or paleontologist. There's so many <laughs> things I think that we fit into as an artist, like, you know, um, architecture, you know, um, paleontology, because there's that love. And when you know that some of the ways that history has always been told is through art, cave drawings, bones, whatever, you know, yeah. pottery, shards. I mean, it's the artists that have told, told history. And I do. Mm -hmm. I have an absolute fascination. I have dinosaurs around, too. <laughs> I love it. Yes. They're awesome. <laughs> I do. I even have a museum that's close to us that has a full-size Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, you know, the bones and skeletal system. And I just, I'm like, I go there and I'm like, oh, can I just touch the bones? To like, I want to, they won't let yes. me, but I want to. I want to, I know I do plan on once I'm kind of done with some of these series, have a bigger studio space. I wanted to do a whole bunch of dinosaurs just because they're awesome. fun. I love, I love texture. I love painting like things that look like texture. I don't like necessarily textured stuff. I just like painting smooth surfaces that make your eyes think that it has life to it. And I just, this one just blew my mind when I finally did it. I was like, yes, I did it. I was like, oh, okay, I did this one right. <laughs> Very awesome. I love yeah. it. Okay, mm -hmm. so do I, oh, let me look. I think I gotta go, okay, so oh, close your eyes. I have to go back. Okay. I started with one, but that was not the first one that loaded. So we're gonna go, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. well, I know. Um, all right. This one, I think this one might have been the yeah. first oh. one I <laughs> called you out on, and he wasn't even finished, and I loved it so much. I was like, artist of the day. And you're like, wait a minute, I'm not even done. <laughs> it was so good already. And I oh just loved I loved I love oh, yellow. Nice. But I just love this favorite, one so much. Is that your favorite color? You know, it's funny. what is your favorite color? Okay, that's always so the first I, crush code, yeah. I say red. And my husband okay. laughs because he goes, no, it's yellow. And, really? uh, you know, that one's so, me too. <laughs> it's interesting. Fall is definitely my favorite um, season, probably because it has that whole mm -hmm. color spectrum in it from reds to yellows mm -hmm. and oranges in between. But he says mm -hmm. the reason he thinks it's yellow is because I'm always drawn to something yellow. My my eyes always go, oh, my gosh, I love that. And it's yellow. So mm -hmm. he's probably oh, right. right. This green always was a little girl, and then it, when I went rebellious in school, well, it was red. Mm -hmm. And then my boyfriend went, "No, I think you like green." I'm like, "No, I don't." And I'm wearing like green glasses, green shirt. I had green shoes, I had a green jacket, and he's like, "Are you sure?" Right. And then I went, oh, "I guess it is green." <laughs> <laughs> no, but these I love lemons. Um, yes. This I is a, this is a very very spiritual piece um it didn't mean to be but it just kind of was so 
obviously the scales this is libra um i don't know yeah i don't know if anybody knew um at this at this time i can't remember what day it was we had a major solar eclipse in the united states in libra and i took it as um god was speaking with me saying like you know this is a season where you're weighing what is truly good for your spirit and what's um you know what's fruitful for you and what's fruitful for me is for years i like the empty scale on the on the right has nothing and so obviously it doesn't really mean anything what i was holding in my life for so long was like depression emptiness um you know and for the longest time i refused to let myself be joyful um lemons represent joyfulness for me everywhere i've gone this entire summer like i saw lemon print everywhere and i when i think of lemons the smell of it the it Fresh. just it brings yes and every time i smell it's my favorite scent citrus yes. and so i was like i have to i'm obsessed with lemons so i just kind of did that and i kind of i mainly just wanted to do a still life i said oh i'm just gonna throw some lemons around and it's just gonna be pretty but it ended up being much more meaningful and much more like god wanted to say something and i just went okay sure go ahead here's the brush you, you paint for me lord <laughs> and this is what came out and i tried yeah. to do another little like chinoiserie in the corner uh didn't really turn out so well i said it doesn't matter it needs to be faded out anyway it's just meant to be bright and, and man and it's, it's i really so like beautiful. how the scale turned out yeah Right, I mean the light and the reflection on the scale, and I have one. I'll have to post it on our group. I'll have to go look through my old pictures. But I actually physically made. Um, I'm a Libra, and I made an actual scale out of wood when I was in college. And it's funny what you put in these balances. At this time, I had three golden eggs on one, and my paint supplies on the other, both in the balancing. So, am I an artist or am I a mother? What is more priority to me? And of course, it was of course the eggs. But it's just really interesting what we put in there. But it was a, a moment, like you said, it's a moment where you sit there and you reflect going, my life is mm -hmm. not in balance. And what what needs to be more? What needs to, you know, weigh more? Where, where does my focus need to be? And I mm -hmm. love it. the reflection as far as just looking at this as an art piece, the light that hits this and the reflections off of the scale, off the book, off the mm -hmm. lemons, off the plant. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Thank you. Well, this, this time um, I have a bit of aphantasia. I need a reference. This one I used a lot of references for light. <laughs> and so I said, I got to make sure I know where the light source is at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I had a picture of lemons I actually took, the scale. I just kind of thought, okay, where is my like light coming in? I'm saying like maybe top right corner. I said, sure, let's go with that. <laughs> right. Just. Yeah, uh, I will say this is the one. I don't know if you have any of my Grammys paintings. This one I think looks the most like my Grammys paintings. Yeah, I and just, I'm, I'm honestly kind of proud of it. So yeah, I am. I am obviously very proud yeah. of this one as well too. Because like I said, I called this out, and you weren't even done with it. And I was like, oh, this is this is turning out lovely. This is awesome. So it's and definitely one of my favorite pieces from you. Um, it's yeah. always hard to choose a favorite but this one i like i said it's the yellow and the light and the reflection and just right so much to this i think i don't even think i named this one no nope. it needs a name so if y'all want to vote for a name go for it <laughs> you'll you know what you'll have to put that up because you like to start things miss christmas tree thank you very much what a great beautiful I challenge <laughs> I love it. No, that's a great thing. But put this one back up and ask people to name that for you. That would be awesome. And we'll share that out and get some opinion. All right, who wants you. to name this painting? I think I did, but then I, I didn't like the title. So new title up for grabs. <laughs> so, uh, we will do that. Or you will do that. Yeah. And I'll make sure that I share that for you. But I love when you guys are doing that. So you definitely have the, the Christmas thing going this season. Mm -hmm. So I think I have these like all in a weird order. So I'm going to... That's fine. That's okay. kind of how I am. So, <laughs> all right. Okay. What did I do? Am I missing a color? I'm missing. No, we're missing red, green. The only one I haven't painted is violet. I have no idea what I'm doing for violet. So, we're almost done with the rainbow. What happened? Hold on. Um, we're going to stop the share. For some reason, I got to do this again. Okay. There we go. Ooh. There we go. All right. So let me go. And I, I, I have these in order, but then when you go and load these up, they kind of go all over the place. So we're going to start with this. And this reminds me, oh, I cannot tell you, anime to a certain extent. 
I teens yeah. love anime. And Guilty. when I right when <laughs> I was teaching in school, I mean that was their most the most favorite I think month or so that we did that. And I was like, what is going on with anime? I'd never seen it. I all of a sudden had to learn how to draw it and I teach it. Like it. It just is. I love it it's too. Fun. Guilty as charged. Um, right. So these are Posca. So um, I paid these on very thinly and they dry. It's like you're doing it with marker, but it's like very thin acrylic. And you kind of see my swatches in the corner. I was just making characters. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, I still have this dry cough. I just got over the flu. Still alive. <laughs> um, I just, this was the first piece where I just had fun with it. And I really was just thinking about color theory. So you know how um, I'm looking like the, the guy's hair is yellow. So then I made the girl's hair uh, purple and then his shirt is red. So then hers is green. He's got a black kind of collar so i gave her white pearls and then i kind of um tried to compliment i can't remember what i did with the guy in the orange square but i just kept trying to bounce colors and elements mm -hmm. off of everybody to make it cohesive more of just like to, to train my brain again because i said you know i'm just making something pretty and at the time i was so focused on i need to create content so bad because um, I was like, oh my God, I need my art to um, catch people's eyes. I have to be popular. And I was like, and it doesn't really matter to me that much anymore. It used to really bad. I kept thinking, I can't show my art unless it's like a masterpiece. Because right. I would look at all these videos of like influence. Like, thank God I, I avoid TikTok like the plague. Mm -hmm. um, but you'd say people would show me videos of TikToks of like all these artists and they, they make this like beautiful thing in like two seconds. And I was like, wow, great. I must not be a good artist thing. <laughs> But that's not true. Every everybody is art is good. It's just it's just how much you care about it. And so I just this is the piece I like tried really hard on, but also at the same time not really. So um, but it, they're they're fun, you know. And I did not fun. get an appreciation for this until I had to start teaching this, you know. And I don't still don't mm -hmm. watch like anime movies or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I found it was so fun because again their character. Mm -hmm. So their eyes can be bigger, yes. their hair can be different colors, they're whatever. I mean, they're just they're crazy yeah. animations. And the mm -hmm. history that goes back with anime, I always always teach that too. Um, but it mm -hmm. goes back to like the 30s, you know, and so forth. I mean, so that's oh, yeah. a really um very long form of artwork. And I love it. And you did use oh. beautiful con con like contrast and complementary colors with them. I don't know if everyone knows that, but like if you look at a color wheel green and orange mm -hmm. are on opposite spectrum so they bounce off each other and really play really well together and i love that about this yeah. piece because you did that well you did that very thank you well. i'm a i am very much obsessed with color theory mm -hmm. so that was my biggest thing in art school like that's i wouldn't say i'm an expert but i'm i would say like i'm a little up there when it comes to I, I i love mixing and matching um no and saying, i love oh, this little oh, happy I love this little happy face. I just think it's so pink in the corner. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I love the nose and lips. It's just it's awesome, you know, a little doodle. And I was like, that's awesome. Just fantastic. That's sketchbooks are for. I had to remind myself like sketchbooks are for experiments. If you're not gonna try something in them, then don't wait for it to go on canvas. You gotta try something on a paper that you don't really care about as much. Right. And then oh, yeah, I think is. I kind of remember these were um modern versions of a characters of a book I'm writing uh that's I will announce that way later on I'm I'm writing a fantasy Christian series and it is it is draining <laughs> oh you have got <laughs> to come back on when you have that done we will definitely promote that oh give me little... like two years <laughs> okay <laughs> but you are not the only artist I mean our co-moderator on artist club love Ray he wrote a book as her. well right right the yes. um Mm -hmm. I, I just like uh, the fish and the snake, right? And I'm like, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, I love it when you guys write books and you do your artwork in it. It's a great thing. Mm -hmm. I encourage it. I look forward I to seeing that when it's done. My range would definitely be like, see, you're in high school and maybe college. It's so it's not not for little kids. <laughs> it's, but I would say it's more very authentic and real and it's nice. it does not pull, it does not pull punches but it's about like being a christian in a real world but of course it's like said an ancient setting and i i, I could talk about it some other day but these were kind of like character concepts okay of course i changed i changed it to 
not be modern anymore, but that's them if they were modern. And then I've switched things around and there's like another character I added. I was like, wait a second, why did I draw? I think it's fantastic. And like I said, mm -hmm. I cannot wait. Um, even mm -hmm. if you want to give us, you know, um, just like keep us updated because I can't wait to see it, read it and share it. I get really oh, inspired when you guys do. I need an editor. I need an editor. So bad. Okay. Well, send it my way. We're you know, up. I got summers and holidays <laughs> and I do this. I, you know, I, I teach English. There's so many classes I teach, but I teach English and I'm getting all of our students in high school ready right now for college. Um, so wow. I'm editing a lot of papers right now. So if you ever need that, please, I, I mean that seriously, send it, send it my way. If you want some of these to help look at it. Center, Julie considered. <laughs> All right, Miss Sketch, tell me about yes. her. I don't know who this could be. I don't know who she is, but she's pretty. <laughs> yes, she is. And I love the glasses. Oh. Thank you. I I own multiple pairs of glasses because a girl can never have too many. Um, I said a good self-portrait is not a flattering self-portrait. And so I was like, I'm not afraid to draw myself because if I mess up, I'm not as offended. So I was like, I'm going to draw me in all the most funny angles. I think there's a picture of me from the beach that my brother did with a Snapchat filter. I thought it was so funny. Uh, I got like me and my robe down in the corner. I, I have chronic migraines. So I was like going to do me like oh, holding my head and just being right. funny. I left, all the, I left all the sketches in. I drew them where like pimples were. I said, I did not care. I thought it was funny. <laughs> so it's more of just like, well, you know, uh, and I love I love what I I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No. I was just gonna say, you know, I love it when you artists can do, especially yourselves. I mean, I do mm -hmm. people, but my two hardest ones, I think, and still to this day, is drawing something of myself because it's me, you know, and I'm such a critic. And then when I did my Jesus painting, and I just and I say this not I, to I can understand more, <laughs> but to sit there and and you guys just do this with ease, and I just look at you guys in awe. I'm like, wow, you guys are so talented at doing this. And it's amazing. You did a very good job of drawing yourself. I, yeah. not my forte, um, but it's my forte good. is definitely portraits mm -hmm. of people, especially aunt pets. I'm, I'm still learning, but like people, because I studied them the longest in school. That's what they started you on. And I just, growing up with a lot of insecurity, you stared a lot in the mirror. So like I kind of know my face like the back of my hand. Um, and I'm very aware of a lot of my features. I'm like, yep, I got a big honking nose. Um, so I think I'm not afraid to go in there and just draw the angle, draw like all the, the cracks in my lips. And the thing I love the most that I did is I've got dark circles. People are like, no, you don't. I'm like, yes, I do. I work healthcare. I got dark circles. <laughs> so I went and did a triangle because I liked that graphic. I liked like underneath my eye to represent the eye bag. And then ever since then, I've been doing like triangles on some of my like paintings. You'll see like I'll have like triangles on the, like for under the eyes. Just really I don't know. Good. I just like they're, I just think they're funny. Um, It was more of just me just goofing around and I just thought it, I just thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I love it. Was it was more of just like, it was, it was a making fun of myself, but like, and not a mean making fun of myself kind of thing. It's like, nope, this is you, Kyla embrace yourself traits of you you know <laughs> it's really good comp uh compilate comp compilation of you am i saying that right i'm having a hard time speaking tonight sorry about that but it's just so great and i love all these different aspects of your personality you know and, and moments of you really nicely done thank you you're welcome it's too funny. Yeah. Oh, back to this. Speaking of dragons. Yes. This was my most favorite piece I did in high school. And I've carried it with me for years. And I always keep it as a source of inspiration. This is a mixed media piece. I cannot remember what's all on it. I know the red one, I think there's pastel. The background's watercolor and salt something and like ink um there's acrylics on here there's oh, there's temper on here that's how i did the blue girl my teacher's like you never mix acrylic and temper i said how about i do <laughs> so it's, well i mean you never you never because yeah. like the chemical it's reaction right. but i wanted the chemical reaction it's colored pencils on here there mm -hmm. is i think there's tissue paper is what that green was oh I, love like, it. I think i took 
I think I took the raw watercolor pigment and just kept it in the darkest blue areas just to create it. And I just kind of went crazy. <laughs> it's metallic I think it's paint fantastic. Here. Thank you. I was really I would have told that teacher, I'm so sorry you're so limited by your choices. No. I was she, such a, a, a smart mouth, though, too. She, she was, I, I've gotten worse. Um, she was a very, very good teacher. I think she was just like, no, no, no. I think she was worried for me that it, it was going to be something I didn't want. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is what I want it to do. And she was like, oh. Okay. She's like, I just don't want you to cry. Right? No. Oh, um, I was obsessed with Latin culture. I still really love it. I have not a lick of it in me. Um, but I just, I've always wanted to learn to flamenco dance. I was obsessed with the movements and the costumes. We went to, I think we just recently went to a field trip um, for like the uh, flamenco ballet. Yeah, that's and gorgeous. I was, just, I was just like, oh my gosh, I got to draw this. I got it. And so I looked at all these poses and then part of my class that I was in in high school was a two-year program. You had to choose a theme. Of course, I didn't know what to do. So I chose fantasy. I was like, sure, I can paint anything underneath it. Of course, I got the worst marks ever because I didn't have a cohesive show, but that's because I was just going to paint whatever I felt like at any time and didn't really care. So <laughs> this one was rep to represent like the dancer's movement. So it was supposed to be like dragons coming out as they're moving. And I think my favorite. I think my favorite one is still the gold dragon. I love that fan. I do. I, I do love the face of the red one too. But like, I just I remember as a kid, I was like, I am a perfectionist. I'm like, of course, I was a kid, well, teenager. But to me, that's still a kid. I was like, I am the best. This is this. There's, there's no better art than this. <laughs> I kept the time. You know, this would ins this would inspire a movement on the groups too. With say, art beginnings. Mm -hmm. Hashtag art beginnings, and we could all share Started something. One. I did, did you? Uh, yes. I did not see ago. that. I was, I've started oh, again. Well, was, this is, okay, this was back at like early truth before um, okay. the artist group. I, I would do hashtag throwback Thursday and I would do like one of these because I have a whole portfolio sitting that like directly I'm staring at it and I would just pull out a piece and I go, this one's ugly. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I would just talk about all the art. I did from like that I've saved, honestly, from right. the fire. <laughs> I'm like, this some... is ugly. Let's talk about it. In my drawing experience, we didn't I never took a class where oh, they actually right. had us do humans. We had to do like um um oh. a still you know, a still uh still art, right? So we had like um a cow, like a wolf um skull mm -hmm. that was always there. And I'm like, and I'm not a fan of charcoals just because of the dirt. And Ray has Missed. introduced me to charcoal pens. Thank you. But I do not like getting my hands dirty. And I'm an artist. <laughs> and I don't wear Much gloves. Like, but I, no, I can't tell I, you. I, I, I got so sick. Smudge. Right. I got so sick of that bull. And I would just throw them all away. And then all of a sudden, I kept a few. Because I'm like, oh, this one's ugly. When, as soon as you said that, I thought of the, oh, yeah, the still life with the bull. <laughs> anyway, I would love that challenge. Yes, you know? and then, but then people are always like, so good. I'm like, so good. This is much better than I have. Much better. It's I, And I love it. The primary colors are just so bold. I can even see that where you've good. added the salt. I don't know how many mm -hmm. people know this, but when you mix watercolors and salt, you get this like crystal look. So when you look on the back mm -hmm. of the blue dragon, I can tell I'm like, oh, that's where the salt reacted. I think, I think I could be wrong. I think grab it real quick i don't know if the camera will pick it up do you want me to grab it real quick sure it's, it's okay hold on one second let me grab see it oh where are you you're right here stop sharing where she looks for that so we can get it up close view on, i don't know i don't know dun, 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 dun. i don't know you can see it in the yes it's hard to see in this light here's my eyes. Okay. Very nice. It's yes. more like in real life, it's kind of shiny, but also matte. Uh, uh, we just put her over here. I swear uh, sometimes yeah. our, our cameras don't do our artwork justice because I, I think that looks so much more beautiful. In, in I will say my new camera that I got on my phone, technology is crazy now. 
it, it does pick it up better mm-hmm. but no it, you got you got to see this in real life it's just right. yeah not right the you know, they do okay. And, you know, I'm not a photographer per se. I like to dabble in it. But it seems like anytime, even yeah. whenever we bought great new cameras, and it's still the depth, you yeah. know, or whatever, but it's what it is. But that's really gorgeous. I like that okay. much more in person. <laughs> I think All right. I named it. Let's... What are they? Dance of the Dragons. That's what I called it. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's <laughs> another one. Okay. Oh. That's another. Talk to me about years. her. Her yes. wings. Yes. Okay, without calling out anything in particular, but I love angels. I love that. I mean, the wings mm-hmm. on this is really what caught me. I'm like, wow, they're so beautiful. Go ahead. Thank you. So part of it didn't survive. You can see her scepter. They used to be shiny things. Of course, kids in school are mean. Public school kid. Well, not, not dissing on all of them. They ripped ripped off my um, pieces. I begged my teacher so hard, please, I don't want to display my artwork in the auditorium. The kids are going to draw on them and take things off of them. And sure enough, that's what happened to a lot of my artwork. Mm, so, don't you hate that? They, I, oh, I hate it. It just boils my blood. But I mean, they're teenagers. Yeah. I, I can't. I mean, well, it's you can not blame my them, teenagers. Blame them, but, well, no, but like yeah. <laughs> at the time, I was like, mm-hmm. right. whatever, school bullies. It's a little but, bit more understandable when they are teenagers. When I was at Columbia, I could, I especially the the foreign students. I'm like, please don't touch my paintings. Please don't touch my paintings. So. And I was like, what? what? But yeah. Anyway, yeah. I love her. And so this is is this from high school? You said high school. So I had random moments in high school where like I would do something like this, and then my next piece, I'd be like, oh god, what is this? <laughs> like it's like my skill level constantly was doing this um this was oh what assignment was this we had to study another culture so this is aboriginal um she is based off of the fire goddess but not really it, it's their culture is very interesting i i wish i could remember i remember studying like this whole thing about how it was the she was like a rainbow bird goddess that brought fire and i said okay rainbow bird goddess sounds good to me so i did and i used it because it fit with my fantasy theme and i really just wanted to do one big rainbow wing um and just flames and i love it still it doesn't capture it but that is like emerald green and i i had to keep it because i love it and it still matches a lot of things in my apartment too I love that. Oh. It's like stained oh, well, I just glass. love the depth that we got. Yeah. Well, that, that's what originally the scepter had like little stained glass pieces that got ripped. Okay. So I just got to find more, gl- glue them on, and it will complete it. But nice. Yeah. I, I just love the de- depth that I got. And that's this is when I was really learning about light and shadow. And my teacher was like, Well, where's your light source? I was like, Everywhere, because it's on fire. She's like, No, no, no. You got to pick to give her form and and then i think that's when i learned to like really outline with white and that's kind of like what my grammy does too like i do a lot of black and then i'll outline with and highlight with a lot mm-hmm. of white and that's what i do with a lot of my work and some people are like that's lazy and like yeah well it's effective <laughs> not your work it's mine you know you don't want to look Thank at it you. keep walking <laughs> sorry <Yeah. laughs> right but I love, I do the same thing too with my details and my highlights. If I've got some black, mm-hmm. I'll go over and I'll add white to it to give it that highlight right over that black line mm-hmm. and do that a lot in, in my work as well. It sticks it, you know? Mm-hmm. It does. It does. Mm-hmm. And this is a, a, just the colors in general. I mean, like again, the wings, I can't stop staring at them. It's like looking at stained glass. It's Thank really you. beautiful. Really Thank beautiful. You. All right, girly, let's talk about her. Yes, this is an unfinished, and I will always remain keep her unfinished. I, I just love it. This is just another full mango dancer, and I gave her an elf ear because my teacher was like, "Well, what's this have to do with your fame?" I was like, "Okay, she's an elf." Right. But, <laughs> whatever. Again. Um, yellow. Mm. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I love the dress. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just love. I love the movement. It doesn't do it justice. You got to see it in real life again, and I just. This is another learning about form. I think I was, a, I don't know if I was a senior yet. I think I was a junior. And my teacher was like really focused on how the fabric, like think of the weight of the fabric and then think of the color and just really study your piece. And this is kind of what taught me how to not just like, because at first I think my strong suit was drawing, like drawing forms. Oh, sorry. 
that's not this jerk off girl. <laughs> um, he's like, but now I really think about how that translates to color. And then she's like, think about it in the grayscale, think about it in value. And so I had to break it up in my mind. And I think this is kind of like where it really started for me of like, okay, now I'm really understanding like color popping out, I guess. <laughs> and and no. oh, excuse me now, I've got, um, especially with shadowing and highlights, when you do that, mm -hmm. like you said, the grayscale first, and then you can mm -hmm. see, okay, this is where the shadow lays or the highlight lays. It helps you when you're mixing your colors and applying that as well. And this is really done. I mean, you can see the movement. You can see that it's it's in motion because of the way you've highlighted and built the folds and, and put the shadows in. It's just gorgeous. Beautiful yeah. renditions of yellows in it. It's, it's still not done, but I just love looking at it. It's been so many years. I don't have the original colors. I said, I might as well just leave her. I don't even care that her hands aren't done or... Because it's mainly the dress you're sticking out. I, I did not even notice that she was not done. So I would no, not know that. Not even. No, the face is like barely there, like the hands. I just kind of left her. Right. Maybe it's because you're right. I'm staring so much at the dress and the movement mm -hmm. that that is really what this is about. She's beautifully rendered. Beautiful. Yeah, I might I might need to do some more flamenco dancers. I'm actually thinking yeah. about it. I, I I would love to see that. I would love to see yeah. that. <laughs> Right. This is another, it's yeah. a still life. That's the OG, Miss Grammy. <laughs> All right. I Tell us about this one. Not, <clears throat> this is my absolute favorite painting. And I had, I had to fight for this. Not really fight for this. I said, mom, I'm taking this. And she went, okay. Cause like she, probably, she only gave it up when they started moving, but this, Oh, I don't remember the title of it because some of Grammy's paintings are just arbitrary. She just kind of painted it. I think this was like on her desk at her house. Um, I have that model horse in the middle. It's like this um, bronze type statue. And she just she just kind of painted how she felt. She'd set up still lifes a lot and she just went crazy with her colors. And you can still see like that black outline that she does. But every time I look at it, 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 it still does nothing unless you see it in real life. Like, I think this piece is just the epitome of, like, color theory to mm -hmm. me. And it inspires me. I'm like, she just paired it up so beautifully. I love the depths of the blue in it. I love how that's a complementary across the color wheel, like that navy cobalty blue to, like, that mm -hmm. kind of yellow. But she muted it. So it's, like, muddier. And I just... And I love the pop of the highlight of the green horse and then a little bit of the red on the side. Like, I think it's a whole, like, it feels split complementary, but also kind of analogous. And it's just, it makes me so happy. <laughs> Every time so glad. It. And it's yeah. nice to be able to have the painting and the, um, the beautiful statue, you know, so it's like a, a set. You know, it's really nice. What a wonderful. I have, she, yeah, my mom gave me the force. I was like, so the painting's mine, right? By by blood, right? right? <laughs> no one will be able to prove that that wasn't because you have the set now, you know? Like, this is mine. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. She had a lot of talent. Very nice. She was something. <laughs> she, oh, that's Peppermint Kitty. My, my mom, she had a black and white cat Oops. named Peppermint. Oh, Oops, that's kind of I'm sorry. Sorry. There you go. Okay. Um, I don't have this piece. This is a piece that's like hanging in my mom's house. So she's like, no, that's my kitty. And I said, that, that's fine. But I just love the colors in this. And even though they're not perfectly detailed, you can still tell they're just fresh flowers. And that's like an element that I've always taken from Grammy. It's like, I don't have to focus so hard on like it being perfect, realistic. I can but I, I love how you could just know what it is just by the color placement. Right. And like, I know those tell, like, snap dragons yeah, right away. Mm -hmm. Right. And I love that. I love she's just peeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I do, I do love the outlining of this too. It reminds me of a few famous po uh, painters out there as well. You mm -hmm. know, that love to do this. I believe that both Van Gogh and Picasso were very much, uh, you know, outliners in a lot of their work as well. I wish I could. When I get to, when I, I keep gonna have an idea talk to her again and be like, who inspired you? What did you do this for? <laughs> right? Did I, you spend always, time in galleries? I mean, you know, right? What did you do? You know, I'm like, I picked up the torch when you were gone. Thank you, but 
I'd like maybe to know she's it, from like... the other side pushing you forward going come on girl you got the I, I, I did always sense that like when, when she kind of passed and then I started picking it up again in high school I was like okay Grammy I hear you and then I felt sad when I gave it up but then when I started picking it up again uh relatively like this year I was like okay Grammy I'm back <laughs> so right nice yeah I love it mm -hmm. all right tell me about this one ah okay so this is uncle harry i wish i knew way more about him i just kind of figured out about him this year of course you know family is my grand my nana went you know about uncle harry i'm like no i didn't know about uncle harry she's like oh this is this is like your great 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 and then several greats and it's like he's a painter and i went oh that well, would have been nice if i had known that so i don't i don't remember the title of this i had to stand on my tippy toes to take this picture because it's so up on her wall but the depth and light in this piece just blow me away but he he was more known for drawing coral reefs and oh. I, I would I, I didn't send it in the pictures because like i don't have any of them in possession i didn't think it'd be fair but if you look him up harry hoffman he did a lot of paintings of just underwater right. which is very unusual at the time and they are right. bright and they and i when i look at them i'm like oh my gosh my artwork kind of looks the same it still has like like just crazy amounts of color and detail but abstractness to it and all the animals coming through <laughs> mm, goodness sorry no problem oh it's awful <laughs> yeah and so every time i look at this i'm just like wow yes i, just, I love how how intricately detailed he can get there like he right. honestly yeah, I, like, I know oh, and i'm yeah. looking at the highlights of the snow i have a piece that i did too which is kind of black and white like this of the snow and it, mm -hmm. you know it's a lot more you know in in depth than people realize you know but it's mm -hmm. you know you get the highlights and you can see the sun is coming through the path and i mean it's just really beautiful i wish what i had an inspiration it, like, I to it yeah so like i always looked towards like my family and what they did and use that as like a reference to okay well they use this technique how would that translate to so yeah and i always just felt like you know i'm very proud to be part of like a lineage of that and i'm just like wow i'm learning more about myself and I, it's more of a re reformation to, um not re -information. it's more of a confirmation from god to me like no no no, i'm i'm meant to be an artist i shouldn't be ashamed that i want to do art like if i um but this whole journey of art for this entire year has been um, I need to realign more to my purpose with God. I shouldn't focus so much on a career because if I'm right. doing God's purpose, everything in my life will fall into place. I don't need to worry about that so much because that's what we obsess about all the time. Right. And just learning about like my roots and my family and just going like, no, I'm just being more true to how God designed this vessel. So that's right. That's right. I mean, I've like, yeah. spent. So don't, you know, and don't worry. I mean, you're supposed to be doing what you're doing. And I love that too, when we listen to God and everybody seems, a lot of my guests have all been like really pushed, especially since 2020. We had a lot of time on our hands, but you know, God okay. coming down and being able to speak to us and prompt us into new things, you mm -hmm. know, and I feel like, oh, I haven't made any of my own personal art yet, but you know, I have mm -hmm. spent the whole year doing, you know, second grade artwork. <laughs> You know, it may not hey, be the that, best. that's valuable that is valuable right but Trust i'm me, like oh. you were you were doing the lord's work <laughs> thank you right i mean it's it's just kind of funny i look at it and i'm like okay this is just you know probably been like this sucks thursday <laughs> for a second grade level it's great but you never know i mean that's how we get inspired and then i of course i'm getting on to some of my others i'm getting so inspired by you guys that i'm actually mm -hmm. i've got surrounded with my stuff behind me um to just go mm -hmm. And have yeah, it set up. Forget mine. Let me see yours. Like I'm always like, okay, my art's cool, but let me see your stuff. Like I, I always. That's right? what I miss about art class. Yes. I, people be like, oh my gosh, that's. I'm like, yeah. Who cares about what I'm drawing? What are you doing over there? Like, really? I, I, miss I that like so much. <laughs> I like that to some extent, but I my teacher would always laugh at me because I would find a corner and I'd get a mm -hmm. couple of easels and I'd literally block myself into a corner so people could not come and bother me. I, you know, I not one to listen to the classroom music. I'm not one to talk. I mean, I kind of go into my own little world. And my okay. teacher was so great about that. She just kind of like peek around the the canvas and be like, you doing all right? Or she'd answer, you know, if you just put a little something like here and then she'd walk away. That. But um, I would do that if in general. <laughs> 
like I I hate to say like I would do it in my general art classes <laughs> I would I would have a table to myself but if I was in like the advanced class I'm like I felt like there was a level of respect and like interest and it was so, worse no. for me Really? In my graduate classes, it was worse. <laughs> In fact, my professor there, I loved that professor at mm -hmm. Columbia. And he was actually from Japan. He was visiting professor for a couple of years. And he mm -hmm. would play like disco music and all this stuff. And here I am painting about rape, you know, and he, he got on real quick. He goes, this is not a place for you. If you'd like to go home and just send me pictures and do like a digital, you know, like progress and just show me and bring it in and attend the lectures, but then you're free to go because I could see that you're cringing with everyone coming up to you or you know the music is bothering you i go well that's just because of the medium i'm you know the the message i'm trying to to do mm -hmm. but at least i had some art professors that were pretty understanding but yeah i could care, my care less what other people were doing at my college they were they were <laughs> <laughs> right i don't know some people had some really great things but it, it, i had a much better time with my undergrad maybe because the differences mm -hmm. of students versus at columbia and the things mm -hmm. I was seeing um, people paint, you know, I was like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm just not really into that movement or this, whatever. I, I don't know. It's just me. But there were some that I loved. We had some textile makers and things like that. That fascinated me. I was like, oh, my gosh, you're literally making the cloth and the textile and everything. And that blew me away. So anyway, no, but yeah, I, I, yeah, now I'm at home. Um, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is gorgeous. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. OK, we've seen her. Let me get yep, seen her. Seen okay, that, let me that. start. I told you I'm all over the place with this. Sorry, everyone. Well, the, the, the files I sent you were all over okay, the place. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, this one too. Yeah. I love it. Oh, being from Arizona and having Afro Latino <laughs> children, let me tell you about what I loved okay. about Dia de Muertos, right? Okay. Oh, my gosh. So, I just yeah. wanted there's no real thing. I, this is when I started really doing digital and I said I'm gonna try something crazy here she is uh this was like a three hour drawing of just experimenting and going crazy okay I don't know really much to say <laughs> you have this through a certain medium okay so I have to say that I'm 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 getting better at this but um I am pretty anti-digital and I'm learning to be more flexible, especially since I have a digital online school. <laughs> but I felt like, you know, see, and this probably because an experience I had. I had people who would steal my art, Photoshop it slightly, and then claim it as their own. And this happened at my undergrad. So I had a huge hate for, for Photoshop. And I'm learning mm. to kind of get past this. So is that something, I mean, is that what you're using or do you have a different? Um, I can um, show company? you. So the reason I started doing digital is my um my boyfriend he is a digital graphic designer okay. he's amazing he's great at what he does but i always jokingly and he still hates it i go that's cheating he goes that's not cheating i go no no, no it's cheating you can put paint anywhere you want so it's cheating he goes no 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 there's a skill to it and i said all right fine and so he gave me his old tablet me try and i went okay well it's still kind of cheating but yeah there's some skill to it and he went uh-huh chance <laughs> um right. basically i just have a samsung tablet I can try and pull up the program real quick. It's just a sketchbook. Oh, gosh, for the oh. load. I didn't mean to pressure you on the spot, but um, it, it, it's like an easy. I had it right next to me. I'm getting so. over that again. Let's give some kudos there and love to Ray, our co-moderator, who who literally teaches digital arts, and he's like, you know, Lady House. <laughs> you need to get over that. I'm like, when you have, somebody steals your artwork, though, and now I always have like. Um, a watermark when I share mine and things like that that's in the picture because I mean I just was like wow but yeah. there's no difference you know I mean there's things that people have told me too that what's mm -hmm. the difference of you going and taking a, a picture of that and then trying to repaint the same thing or so, painting yeah. what the masters do you know and yeah how many times See, have you done like the starry night or something so I don't know there's there's a lot of that no I don't do that but like um so basically if you can see kind of okay oops let me stop so you, oh you're fine okay. um you kind of just it's like so it's a layer type thing each one's a oh. layer and you can see like you can oh, of course i don't have a pen on me you can like oh you got get rid of layers and you can okay then you can switch back, back and forth and huh. you just kind of and they simulate okay different tools 
And I kind of just figured out which ones work for me the most. And there's a thing called a blending tool. I said, it works for me. And so I take it and I just smudge it all to make it simulate paint. Okay. And that's just kind of that's kind of what I've been doing. It's really unorthodox. I've showed other digital artists and they're like, that's not, that's not how you do. And I went, well, it's that that's how I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i do it right my, my layers would probably give them nightmares <laughs> but that's what i did and so what i kind of do is i get i get a couple photo references well did i even say that word right photo references references <laughs> um sometimes if i'm just doing something quick like this like i won't lie like some people say tracing is cheating i'm like i used it for a, a quick pose and then I, I looked at a picture of a lady with her makeup and I used that photo to kind of just, um, I, there's a thing called a color picker. So you click on it and it just takes that exact color and I would take it and apply it to my drawing and just kind of start blending them all together. So it looks like it's realistic, you know, like flush and because I'm actually taking the real colors from the photos. And it taught me so much more about color theory than I thought it would. I was because mm -hmm. when I did a self-portrait of myself, I didn't include it, but I did one of mine and the color it picked out. I was like, pink, I'm not pink. But then I did it together and I went, Oh, I guess I am pink. Because <laughs> you don't think about it and you don't really think about like how colors in nature that God's created pair together to make your eyes think that it's something else. So this right. that's kind of what I did with this real quick. And I think. I love the eyeshadow. That's my favorite part is when I saw those mm -hmm. eyes, I went, yes. <laughs> love that. Mm -hmm. okay, let me get this back on. We've got, I believe we've got one more here to share. Let me, okay, where is that? How did you, um, how did you have the green one? I am looking. Okay. Oh, no, I got two more. The rain and the, the, beautiful baby dog oh my gosh okay, okay. we're gonna oh, show this one. i thought i sent you my um my green one and for my monochrome maybe and i sorry if i don't have that downloaded at this time it's fine it is okay but this oh right i saw this it just like the uh, the ability to i love it when you can see through things you know, it kind of reminds me of the sculptors. When you look at them, they've mm -hmm. got the veils over them. You're like, how did you carve that? Right. This is really, really done well that you can see right through this Lots raincoat. Of the power of digital is I got to layer right. um, different tools and they're just studying how the color looked. Um, I said, I focus less on like, how am I going to make it see through and more on just, okay, what's the color and like this little section right here. And then I said, I can always add a layer on top of like a thin brush to make mm -hmm. it look like it's plastic. Very nice. Yeah. Very scene nice. is just I... so funny. <laughs> it's so nice. We went to, this is my brother. Um, we went on a, a trip to Boston during yeah. the summer and it rained. Of course, he didn't pack for the weather. I was over prepared. And so he walked around with this little poncho on. But he, I love him. He's a little bit of a diva. He did not want to get his curls wet. So he has, he has a silk cap on and his poncho and he's walking around like this. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get wet the whole time. <laughs> We're sitting in a Starbucks. <laughs> and I thought he, he looked so ridiculous. And when I took this photo of him, I was like, this is the most beautiful photographic, like, composition. I was like, I have to paint this someday. But it, I just, every time I see it, it just, it just cracks me. Right. So but I make you happy, rainy, too. Rainy yes, this is a rainy day in Boston. And it's, I don't consider it finished. I rush this so hard for Christmas. But I would have put maybe more details into the table and, like, maybe fix the cups a little bit the one in the background looks a little too flat i think but it's, I, had, I had fun with it <laughs> yes it is looking great i mean really looking great i just like i said when i looked at this one it instantly reminded me of the master sculptors that you know you mm. could see the uh, the body or the whatever you know the in details underneath the veils and the fabrics mm -hmm. and whatever you're like wow and I really love that. I appreciate those kind of um, expressions and uh, art forms a lot. And you did that really well here. Really well. Yeah. 
All right, we have, oh, we got Carrie Lake. So two more. Carrie yes, Lake. Left more. Yeah, I did Carrie Lake. That is so funny because um, I know mm -hmm. her. I mean, I'm not like best friends with her, but I told you mm -hmm. I was a chef before this in Arizona and I had mm -hmm. a restaurant for over 17 years. So I go on the news and cook for them a lot. And I remember seeing her at an event and I was like, I, do you remember your chef from Arizona? And she stopped and turned at me and she was like, oh my gosh, it's been like 20 something years, right? She's like, and she ran over, gave me a hug and did remember me. But she is really, I truly dying. Oh dear. She is what she says she is. I mean, every time I met her, anytime she helped my parents with, with the flag events in Phoenix, you know, my, um, just really, really loves our country mm -hmm. loves you know people and she's just a truly great woman so you did a really good job with her and again she's in yellow she could pull that color off again <laughs> but yes. i love that the that you've got the yellow that's complimenting off her face it's mm -hmm. bouncing the lights bouncing off her face and off of her clothes i mean it's just you it did this really well i just want to draw a powerful lady mm -hmm. <laughs> and she that's is nice. really like i said a, a really wonderful lady you know like I, 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 I um i guess sorry my my laptop's giving me a warning i don't have my charger okay. i got like 20 percent left um she well i've i've kept you for like no, an hour and a half so we have just a few <laughs> but you did really um, really good with her and i hope that she you. sees this and you know you i tagged her, her but did you i did but nah it, it, it's fine i just I was thinking more of like you know how people say oh my god i can't i want my daughter to have like a female role that's always like mm -hmm. this feminist model i was like well i'm gonna draw a real real person that i would want my daughter to look up to if i had a kid i'm like that's the woman that's right i want to paint I, up. that's what i think in my house you know nice and she like i said she really has a great heart i mean i don't live with her i didn't you know or anything but from what i always saw her of when she came to eat at the restaurants or if i go there i mean she just always seemed to be the same genuine person and i really love that definitely cares about others and she's a mom and definitely cares about her children so what very cool good things. job and i like that you love put her in yellow see i i i love <laughs> that that be my favorite color there <laughs> have you oh. not seen a theme every time <laughs> i see a yellow painting of yours like oh and it's yellow so, yellow <laughs> okay so this one gets my heart a lot i am a lover of animals oh, too yeah. wow there was this one point where i had over eight dogs you know i mean <laughs> it was just crazy but um this is really done well as well is this your personal dog this yeah. is a family dog this is grizzy uh, she's known as griselda she he is a Shiloh Shepherd, um, laziest beast you've ever met, and she only moves for food. <laughs> and, I said, and we said we love her too much. I was like, I have to draw Grizzy for for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So this photo I had, and I said I'm gonna go crazy with her fur. I love it. I she kind of reminds story. me a little bit of an Australian <laughs> Shepherd. But she's much much bigger. She much bigger, more German. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very right. much German Shepherd, but just massive fur and just snaggle teeth. Just <laughs> beautiful. I love Big it. Wolf. I got to do some pictures of my own dogs one of these days too, paintings or or even of my family. I just don't. I'm more mm -hmm. abstract. But this just see, I always love and vote on these dogs. You guys pull on my hearts when you guys have the animal pictures. I'll just tell you because there was a time when, that, when we lived in northern Arizona, a lot of people would just drop off animals. We ended up with 23 animals at one point on our big 40-acre ranch, you know? And you're like, good grief, you know, as they're wandering, looking for um, food, water, you know, to survive. But I do, I have a huge love um, always adopting things. And I just, you know, their eyes, their hearts, they're just, their smiles. You guys are doing mm -hmm. a great job. And this is, again, one of my favorites. You did a really good job on this. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll make sure I tell Grizzy you said hey. Okay. <laughs> well, I know that you're running out of battery. So there's a last yes. thing. Um, <laughs> where do people find you? Besides Truth, you guys, if you're not on Truth Social and an artist um, corner, you need to be. But there's other, like you said, there's other wonderful art groups as well, which I do belong to as well. And I have been highlighted. Thank you. Um, Truth Art, art Project has highlighted mm -hmm. for as well. Yes. Um, and so mm -hmm. I, I love it. I just wanted to have a group that I got to see you all call me selfish, yeah. but I want to see you all in one. And I, again, I don't think art's only painting or something, you know, um, and Monday. so 
Mm-hmm. You, I know that they can find you on True Social <laughs> under Mystic Goose. Uh, do you have any other social medias that they can follow you on? Certainly no. I'm surprised I even showed my face today. So I'm I'm very private. I am not a fan of social media yeah. and I just kind of fly under the radar right now with the political world. But one day I will eventually try to set up my own website where people can go buy prints, uh, maybe more like a blog type of space. For as of now, you can just follow me at Mystic Goose on True Social where I post art and all kinds of nonsense and I talk about the pharmaceutical world. So yeah. it's kind of you like a slice what? of life. You yeah. ever need help with your website? There's lots of people who have been in this group that are doing their own, and there's people I can send you to. I can help yeah. you a little bit with that. But when that time comes, you just reach out because there's a lot of people in this group that are just so eager to help mm-hmm. each other. And I think that's one of the things, like I said, you know, I'm not a huge person on social media per se as well, okay. <laughs> but I love it when it's about the community. Okay. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you see all this fear or all this political, and everyone said it can be overwhelming and i tell everyone this too i love that we i can wake Mm -hmm. up and after i do my morning whatever i go to true social and i get to highlight somebody and i get to look at artwork or listen to music or do something and it sets my day off right and gives me a nice beautiful cleanse you know so um you guys please do that and make sure that you follow her and give her some shout outs um she's got an amazing and she's been highlighted as artist of the week a couple of times i believe right yes we love you and she starts yeah. amazing challenges. We've got um, the HTO color yeah. artist that's going to be doing recliner art for us next month, where it's literally art. sitting at a recliner and drawing and sharing. I want to challenge you to post, um, like what you said, like a, a throwback like Thursday it, or something, right? And I love, I do love the challenges. And she's the one, everyone that started our Christmas tree challenge. So you guys give her a huge thank you for that as well, because, you know, I really felt that we needed to kick in the season. You know, and I don't see that a lot of that going on. And so thank you for, for getting that started. You just definitely helped bring some Christmas spirit to our corner. Um, one last thing. First of all, thank you so much for being my guest. You don't know how yeah. much I'm excited about this. But well, I always ask somebody before they leave, if you had to inspire somebody else, because there's somebody out there going, I can't do this, or I haven't done this, or gave me saying as an inspiration before you leave? Wow, it just came to me. Um, One of the quotes that I've kept with me, well, there's two quotes. One is from my favorite book series, Books Books of Hell and Or um, by Alison Krogan. She goes, don't be ashamed of not knowing something. There's only shame in not being willing to learn. Um, And then one quote that I kind of made up one day, it's like, it's okay to be a late bloomer because once all the flowers in the garden wilt away, you're going to be the most beautiful one in the garden. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. I have never so thought of that. Away. Right? That's grow, awesome. Grow at, your, grow at your own pace. You're going to be the most beautiful rose in the garden when everyone's come and gone. That's so right. just, just keep that. on going. You're, you're going to get better. And the same thing with art too. Um, my art, I mean, I, I did not save the really bad ones. Like my art was bad. And you just keep on going and going and going. And like most things in life, you're going to get more refined. You're going to grow up. You're going to change and just keep at it. You're in a season now. Seasons come and go. So, Right. That's right. Thank you so much. Um, I, we love you. We love that you belong to the group. We love your artwork. And it was just an Thank absolute you. pleasure. And then you're going to come back when you got their book going, right? Yes. <laughs> Working awesome. on it. <laughs> Well, I will see you on Truth, and I look forward to seeing more of your work. Everybody, again, you can follow her on Truth Social at Mystic Goose. Thank you, Hong Kong. Thank you. All right, and I'm back. I hope you guys enjoyed that so much. Oh, wasn't she talented? She just got such a big genre of artwork and just so versatile. I'm so glad, you guys. I loved being in the chat with you and talking. Um, I did promise that I would show this. So I'm going to see if I can do this. Um, All right, here we go. Um, We're talking about sculptures and throwback uh, Thursdays. And I said I would share that. I'll have to share a picture of that as well. But I really love the yellow one so much. I mean, there's so many I really love, but you guys saw that because of the Libra. And I said I would show this. So we're going to add this to the stage. This is a sculpture. Let's get that up here, if everyone can see that. 
this is a sculpture that I created um, in my undergrad that I actually built from wood. And it was just the kind of, you see why I love the, the sign of the Libra, right? And I talked about how one side was balanced with art and the other side was balanced with the eggs, you know, children and the eggs, you know, kind of thing. And I have family on it. Um, and it's just really something I enjoy doing. I love creating with so many different medias. I love working with wood. I love, you know, um, so great things. I'll show you something else here too. Um, we'll pass it. This is my acrylic work, everyone. But I wanted to, I love her throwback Thursdays. And this very first one was probably the first painting. Um, let me put, whoops, sorry, everyone. Ah, and I just lost that. That was the first painting, our first drawing I ever did. Let's add that back to the stage. There we go. The first drawing I ever did. And you can see, you know, I'm like, not so great with people, but I love the idea. Uh, she really just reminded me to share some things out, some wonderful things. And I love the idea of the throwback Thursday, you know, and I just, I, like I said, I love it when you guys put these challenges in artist corner, it just keeps everybody involved and makes us um, learn about each other, share each other's talents. And it was, she is just a wonderful guest. Oh, you guys all are. I, I just can't tell you how, uh, how wonderful it is for me to be able to have different guests on. You know, we've had so many different guests this year. You know, I, I have to do that for New Year's Eve. It's just a, a little shout out to all the wonderful guests I've had. And we are going to be full in January, too. If you think you guys were in an art show now, you just wait for January because we have back-to-back -back artists from our group coming. Um, and I love it. Some amazing artists and um, musician creators. I mean, literally uh, creates the actual instruments. And as if you're wanting to be on my show, you want to celebrate your art, your book, your poetry, your music. We've had concerts on this show. You know, I mean, it's just been so much fun. So please reach out to me. You guys can find me at True Social or Twitter. So True Social is Lady Hamilton Art. Twitter is Lady Hamilton AR1. I would love it. Just reach out because I would love to have you on the show and highlight your work. All right. A quick message from our sponsor. If you guys don't know... I do run a nationwide um, online private school. And if, you know, it's something for you or something you could help out with or something for somebody else that you might know that's looking for something, I have seen such miracles happen with these youth and this art integration, this retention, critical thinking. I mean, just the levels that I've seen in the feelings that they have, the empowerment it's just been a real blessing. So this is our sponsor, everyone. And we will get back to our Christmas trees right afterwards. All right, that is Hamilton Liberty Academy. And what a God-given blessing it has been to open, establish, and run this school and see youth lives get changed with teachers and so forth that just absolutely believe in them. I, I cannot tell you. So, and a thank you to those that have already donated too, because like I said, we've had many things with supplies and microscopes and, you know, it's just thank you so much. It just makes their world and be able to see different things. I mean, you don't even think about art and a microscope. They've been able to see their cells. They've been able to see their blood. They've been able to see plants and then uh, 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 photograph them and even paint and draw them. I mean, it's just amazing. I love, love it when we mix these kind of things together. All right. So Christmas trees, let's add that to the stream. And I am going to go here. Um, this is right. I love that you guys share. This is a Grinch Christmas tree. Oh, I think that's great. All right. Then Aleonis and your stockings. Oh my gosh. You know, that's what I'm saying, you guys. Talent, talent, talent. Whether you are painting or you are sewing, just love, love her work. Look at these beautiful stockings and then this beautiful Christmas tradition that you guys have been also sharing with me with selling you know sending socks to people and her grandchildren I love it 
Um, this is a Leonis's uh, Christmas tree. Absolutely beautiful. Handmade, if I remember correctly, handmade ornaments, glass ornaments, just gorgeous. More of her stockings that she makes. Just beautiful. There's Artist Corner, everyone. If you want to join, this is the, the, this is the group that I run. So make sure that this is the one you are joining. I love it. We do a shout out every day of your artwork. Christmas cookies, you guys are saying Texas Patriot. Thank you so much. These are awesome. I hope you guys get to do these this weekend. I've seen that you guys are doing lots of cookies. It's awesome. Another great Christmas tree made out of books. Oh, what a great idea. I remember doing it all like this before, but I've never seen the Christmas trees. Awesome. Um, for the heck of it, that's your Christmas tree. Beautiful. I love that. I love that it says peace. We've got H2O colorist. Oh, very nice. I'm just so excited you guys all shared these with me. All right, we have ILZ photos that makes hand ornaments. Oh, look at these. These aren't these gorgeous. This is like that marbling effect that I did with you guys when we were making coasters. Really beautiful. Elionis again. Look at that. Look at that. So unique. So beautiful. So beautiful. And the Christmas socks. All right. This is my Christmas tree, everyone. I went with a blue and silver theme this year. Mr. Kimori's Christmas tree. We have Ray's Christmas tree. Just beautiful. T Glock. Look at that. I love it. I am so thrilled. Thank you guys so much for sharing your Christmas trees with me, your traditions with me, your handmade things with me, your cookies with me. I mean, right. And thank you so much. I just love it. I hope you guys are going to have the most beautiful Christmas. All right. I'm just looking at my notes to see if there's anything else. Yes. So Sunday, sorry that I have to look at my notes. I just get so involved looking at the interview of myself too. Sunday, we're going to be doing holiday drinks. So Sunday at noon is when my show comes off Eastern um, comes on Eastern standard time, 12 PM. And we have done so many things from handmade gifts to cooking and traditions. And so the last one we're going to do for Christmas Eve is holiday drinks. I'm going to be making homemade eggnog and crock pot hot chocolate for you guys. And then we're also going to look at our mead that we made and we have the cider that we made. So this is really exciting because that is just coming and in finishing now. So I'm hoping that we have a great day celebrating um, and sharing our wonderful, I think we've shared a lot of Christmas traditions, but the last one I'm going to share with you is holiday drinks. So I hope everybody can join me again Sunday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then let me see, I've got to at something else. So sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, I just need to add a few things here. I'm kind of, just the me show here, but give me one second because JJ has got me here. I cannot tell you how wonderful this is. Thank you so much, JJ. He's worked really hard on, um, i got to load that up. Sorry. Can't do two things at once. He's worked really hard Okay, that one, I don't know why. Okay, we're going to try this again. Hmm. It wouldn't let me load that up. It's something I'll have to talk to you about. Let's hopefully we can get that loaded up. It does not want me to do that. Okay, interesting. Sorry, everyone. He works so hard on getting me music set up. Let's see if we can get this one. Nope. Okay. So I am going to try a different way. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not. I was hoping because he worked so hard on getting me music for the end of the show. And it is really not wanting me to do that. So give me one second to see if I can load that up a different way. Thank you everyone for paying attention or, pay, or st sticking with me. We're going to see if I can do it this way. All right. Sorry, everyone. This is the first time I've been, ever done this. We want to make sure this works. 
<laughs> yes. So I think I'm going to be able to do it. I think I've been able to load it up. All right. So I just, again, you guys, thank you so much. If you want to find me, you can find me on True Social at Lady Hamilton Art, or you can find me on Twitter at Lady Hamilton AR1. Please come join Artist Corner. And thank you so much. Make sure that you like, follow, and share because it's so important that even if for me, I really, really appreciate it, but it's also very important for my guests. You know, we want to make sure that they, we get out the word about who they are and what they're creating. And I appreciate that so much. And then again, Sunday at 12 p.m., we're going to be doing holiday drinks. And I'll be able to send you guys a very, very Merry Christmas um, little shout out for that day as well, too. So thank you, everyone, for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. I hope you all had a great time. <laughs> Right. I hope you guys had a great time learning about Mystic Goose. It's been a real pleasure, and I'm hoping that this plays for us really well. And I will see everybody on Sunday. Have a great weekend. Go be with your family, your friends, your loved ones, and tell me all about it. Right. Share your pictures. Share us. Uh, share with us what you guys are doing. My heart is with you. I pray for you every single day. And you guys know how much I love you. So I will see you guys again on Sunday. Have a very blessed night. If you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy had grown to be this child that you? Delivered, will soon deliver you. Did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Did you know your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know? Oh, oh. Your angel cry when you kiss your baby. Kiss baby. Oh, Mary, did you know? Oh, Mary, did you know? Did you know your baby boy was Lord of all creation? Did you know? Your baby boy will one day rule the nation. Did you know? Let us see the child behold it. the grave. Making bread pudding today with a beautiful whiskey uh, cream sauce. Just these um, books from Ayn Rand. This is Read the Living, The Fountainhead, and Atlas Shrine.